Jeff Wade here at PharmaPricing.org. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be looking at FDA guidelines for industry regarding diabetes mellitus and evaluating CV risks in new anti-diabetic therapies to treat type 2 diabetes. Uh, these are the FDA guidelines released in 2008 and we're going to be looking at some of the unintended consequences of them. Now, uh, basically the FDA uh, has come out with these guidelines in 2008 uh, and is more conservative now with respect to developmental drugs to treat diabetes. And this is during a time when diabetes cases are really on the rise uh, within America. So the implications of this uh, for Takeda in 2009 and their drug alagliptin, uh, which is a developmental drug to treat diabetes type 2, um, got snagged up. U.S. regulators said they need more data to evaluate the experimental drug. Now, what this means is it has resulted in a 5,400 patient phase 3 study prior to approval um, at a cost of about $120 million uh, to Takeda, and that's at an estimated cost of $22,000 per patient, uh, which is fairly conservative, uh, given that Quintiles said... Uh, these studies could cost up to $30,000 a patient. So a real cost uh, at the outset to get these developmental drugs uh, approved and ensure that they do have a, a good safety profile. Um, but what's a little bit ironic then uh, is because of these higher developmental costs, there's a lower probability uh, that Me Too drugs will be developed uh, given giving sort of fewer options than uh, for patients and managed care professionals in a time when diabetes and costs are on the rise. Now, because of these big developmental costs to get these experimental drugs to market, smaller and medium-sized pharma companies uh, won't have the resources to pursue this. Uh, and bigger pharma companies, um, which are not apt to compete on price, uh, we'll probably see that they'll end the development of these drugs uh, rather than create uh, price competition. But more importantly than just the financial costs is as well uh, the health outcomes costs. If we look at national diabetes statistics in 2007, uh, we can see that the direct and indirect costs were $174 billion. And that was just in 2007. Obviously, that's going to continue to rise. Um, but if we extrapolate this uh, epidemiology to an example of a new developmental drug, uh, one that might be proven to reduce CV events uh, as well as lower AC1 levels um, above metformin alone. But before a drug like this could be approved, there would need to be uh, screening data for the FDA, which uh, in the case of Takeda, they're carrying out a phase 3 trial before development. And, uh, you know, this is significant cost and as well uh, can take three or four years uh, to collect all of this data. So the danger is that while this data is being collected, people with diabetes are still suffering and expenses for people with diabetes are more than two times higher than for people without. Um, the risk of stroke is two to four times higher. Heart disease death rates two to four times higher. So if we take these numbers and extrapolate them a little bit, um, and look at this epidemiology, uh, in the time that it would take the three or four years to get the data that the FDA is looking for, um, in that time, it translates to about 300,000 people uh, dying while waiting uh, for a drug with similar efficacy uh, and a, a better safety profile, presumably. So, uh, we just wanted to take a look here at some of them of the uh, perhaps unintended consequences uh, of the FDA guidance relating to the treatment of type 2 diabetes and new anti-diabetic therapies. So hopefully that's given you an idea of some of the factors at play. We have two full reports on this coming out uh, with specific case studies looking at uh, Genuvia and Avandia uh, with real in-depth case studies. So take a look for those. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter yet, uh, reports, please do that on the right. Enter your name and email address. Leverage us as your trusted authority to get the best health pricing and pharma information at your fingertips. Thanks a lot again. It's Jeff Waite at PharmaPricing.org. Have a great week.